So, you've done everything you need and are ready to begin raiding in Season 3. However, going in blind can create issues for newer players since they're unaware of many things. So here's 10 tips to make raiding much easier for the newer player. Let's get the most important thing out of the way first, the quick battle system. New and returning players often overlook this feature and as a result get the false assumption that the game is dead because they can't seem to get parties. If you make your party via the quest board, people will only see your boat if they visit the board and intentionally look for your battle quest. This causes long wait times when it comes to forming parties. The fix for this issue is by using the quick battle system. Instead of making parties via the board, go ahead and press K on your keyboard. This should open a quick battle menu. You can create a raid party through this menu and if you do so, your boats will fill much faster. The reason why the system is much faster is because players can add fights to their favorites tab by clicking on the star icon on the left column. If you have a battle favorited, you will be notified every time someone starts that battle and be given the opportunity to immediately join. So with this in mind, every time you create a party via the system, you will be sending out a notification to everyone on the server that has that battle favorited. This lets people become instantly aware of your party and join the moment you create it. I should also note that this system rewards an additional drop if the boat is launched with a full party. So with that in mind, you should always wait for the party to fill before starting. The quick battle system might be the best way to get parties, but there will be times when you have to make your parties via the regular board. If you look closely at the battle info when creating a party, there are stat requirements. These stat requirements are set by the game, and if you do not meet them, you will be unable to create a quick battle or join someone else's quick battle. If you run into this wall, you have two options. You can either try to increase your stats first, which I will detail how to do in the next tip, or if you're unable to increase your stats further at this time, you can make your party via the board. Normal board boats don't have stat requirements on them, so anyone can make or join them. Just be prepared to wait around for people to join, unless you call for help by using a server megaphone, calling on guildies, or asking in a populated channel, such as Channel 1, or whichever channel has a soap active. If you've hit the aforementioned brick wall and are unable to start or join a quick battle boat due to not meeting stat requirements, there are a few things you can do to boost your power temporarily. As stated in my first video, visiting the hot spring when a soap is active will give you a buff. This buff grants an extra 1400 power if it's a regular soap and an extra 2000 power if it's a premium soap. You can also gain another 1600 power by purchasing the two AP Shop accessories from Ernmus's AP Shop at the Colhen Inn. The last thing you can do for another 500 power boost is to use one of your stockpiled kitty potions which was touched on in the last video. Combining all three of these nets you an extra 3500 to 4000 power depending upon what soap was being factored in. Alright. You're in the dungeon and ready to tangle with a raid boss, but don't run in just yet. Usually someone in party will use a superior guild campfire. Have a seat at the fire once it's made, and after about 10 seconds, you'll receive a buff that slightly boosts your power and recovers your armor durability, which makes your armor less likely to break. While you're waiting for this buff, press your grab key and open the fire shop. Purchase the additional campfire effect. This gives you another power boost and will cause you to receive an extra drop from the raid boss. The 65,000 gold price tag might seem expensive, but you will get more gold back upon completing the raid, so don't worry about the cost. If you haven't noticed, upon starting your first raid, you'll have something called the Goddess Guidance next to your name. This buff will stay with you for your first 10 times in a raid and serves three functions. The first is to provide you with a stat boost to your attack and defense, which makes things easier on you since you are new to the fight. The second effect grants an additional drop to both you and your party members. This effect usually entices experienced players to come down and help because of the extra drop they'll receive, and this will even be represented on the quick battle notification that you send out. 
The third and last effect is guaranteeing your drops regardless of your damage output. Typically in raids, players must manage at least a 7% damage contribution, otherwise they will only receive a single piece of loot. The Goddess Guidance buff protects you from this penalty. Knowing this, be sure to pay attention and learn the boss fight during your first 10 protected runs so that when the buff expires, you'll be seasoned enough to contribute for drops. Just like how bosses can break your armor with enough hits, nearly all raid bosses have a part of their body that can be broken. This can be achieved by hitting a certain part of the boss's body enough times, such as Regina's head to break her crown off. This does not apply to every boss though, as some have exclusive mechanics that are required to achieve their breakoff, such as Iyake's Parasite Break requiring the use of chain hooks. Successfully breaking part of a boss yields an extra drop which will be represented by a core with a question mark appearing. This core cannot be picked up until after the fight. Some characters, such as Kai and Chainblade Vela, are very good for getting breakoffs as they're able to directly attack the breakoff point on the boss's body. If you find yourself struggling in fights and need an extra boost in power or survivability, now might be a good time to visit Bryn and purchase some stimulants. There's three types of stims and they come in three grades. Don't worry about the regular or superior, we're only going to focus on the exquisites. These items can greatly influence your performance in battle, so let's look at all three and elaborate on their effects and when to use them. Fury Stimulants give each of your attacks an 80% chance to have their damage magnified by an extra 4000 attack and 15 balance. Fury Stims are best used when you're well below the boss's attack cap which can be viewed in the battle info. If your attack is close to or above the boss's attack cap, then these stimulants will not have a significant effect. The description of Ironhide Stimulants are not 100% correct. What they actually do is make it so that every time you take damage, there is an 80% chance that you will instead take no damage. There is also a chance that when the damage is reduced to zero, your character might resist being staggered and knocked down. And lastly, we have the Focus Stimulant, which will reduce any and all hit drag to zero. This allows your weapon to cut through bosses without slowing down, creating a pseudo attack speed boost. Each of these stimulants will last one minute upon use, and their effects can be stacked with each other. To quickly summarize when it's best to use them, follow these rules. Use Fury Stims when you're lacking attack power. Use Ironhide Stims to boost your survivability or face tank through certain attacks. And use Focus Stims for a slight DPS boost in the form of faster attacks. To put this as simply as I can, you are going to die in raids. It's gonna happen, but don't ever think that your death is due to a boss being cheap. Raid bosses in Vindictus can seem cheap to a new player, but for the most part, they are fair. When you inevitably die, use your death as an opportunity to grow as a player. Take note of what killed you and try to see what you, the player, could have done differently so that next time you can avoid death. The only way to get better at raids is by actually doing them. Practice makes perfect. Speaking of practice, Vindictus does offer a practice mode which allows you to enter into a raid boss without having to worry about dying. You'll have unlimited lives and can practice as much as you want. Any consumable items you use in practice mode will also be returned to you upon exiting. So use this mode if you're struggling badly against a particular boss. Since this is a 1v1 practice run, the boss will always be focused on you, which will allow you to more easily become familiar with its moveset and how to deal with it. Alright, I'm going to level and be 100% serious here. These are the do's and don'ts of raiding. Poor raiding etiquette can anger your party members and make people less likely to join your boats if you gain the reputation of being an inconsiderate asshole. So with that in mind, please pay attention to this part so that you don't accidentally piss people off. Number 1. Don't start a quick battle boat with only 2 or 3 people unless you check with your party members first. Failing to do so, 
and starting unexpectedly might anger your party because you've just forced everyone into giving up an extra drop. Instead, always ask your party if they're okay with a duo or trio first. Number two, don't run dick first into a raid boss as soon as you load in. This will likely annoy and anger your party members because you've just forced them into giving up another extra drop due to the lack of a campfire being made. Instead, wait for someone to make the fire and wait till everyone gets their buff. And lastly, number three, don't be that asshole who's only obsessed with their DPS to the point of ignoring dead party members. If you see someone dead, go revive them. Now, I understand there are exceptions to this rule, such as needing to handle an immediate boss mechanic first, but once you're freed up, make sure you tend to your fallen comrades. So, that about wraps up 10 tips for newer players when it comes to raiding. I'm sorry that my last tip had a negative connotation to it, but I feel like it was something that just needed to be said. I know I could have delved into raid mechanics and such, but I'm saving that for a future video all on its own. However, the next video will cover guild tips, and maybe after that I'll do a video about each boss's core mechanics, but that's a video for another day. With all that being said, though, I hope you enjoyed and learned something that possibly made your life easier in raiding. Yeah.